Big hello. Okay. Can you say hello? Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> so welcome back. And uh, yeah, so welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast channel. I am here today with my daughter Layla. She is two. Ah! Uh, you too? Yeah. Good girl. And uh, yeah, we're here today to do at least the introduction for a new video. Red one. You want to hold this one? Yeah. You like the red one, don't you? Red one. What colour is that? Mommy. What colour is this one? Red one. Oh yeah, you want me to show it? What colour is this? Oh, red one. Yeah. Yellow. Yellow. What colour is that one? Red. Red. Well done. And what colour is this one? Purple. Purple, well done. And what colour is this one? Blue. Blue. And this one? Good. The Good. Green. Green, well done. Okay, so like I said, we are here today to do an introduction and possibly the prep as well. We'll see how Leila does um, for us. A video about how to spin bats. Oh, uh, yeah, and that one. You want to put that on top? Oh, oh, okay. There's on the end. Well done. So in a in a video a few weeks back, I showed you guys how I made these mini bats. Okay, and how I made these mini bats on my DIY blending board. Thank you. And um, and then I had a few people comment asking how you actually spin from a bat or a mini bat. Um, and I thought I would do a little video showing a few different ways that you can, can I put that one? Okay. how you can prep and spin from a mini bat that one. or a regular bat. All of these apply to bigger bats as well. You might just that need to one. break them up into smaller pieces. No. No. Okay. All right. Um, so so yeah. And to be honest, the only difference between these is going to be how they're prepped. The um, the actual spinning will all be they'll all be spun the same way. But, yeah, be careful, don't pull them apart. Um, <laughs> you're being silly. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so the only difference is going to be how no, no, they're prepped. No, they're all going to be spun no, the same. No, no, no. And I'm actually planning on spinning no, them no, one after no. another. And then... No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah? How do you want mommy to spin it? That one. Okay, and then what? That one. Alright. That one. Yeah. That one. Oh, wow. That one. Yeah. That one. That one. Yeah. That one. That one. Okay. And then I'm planning on plying it with a grey commercially spun yarn. It's a sock weight yarn to kind of maintain no, the yardage. No. And my plan is. Yarn! Yeah. Yarn! We're going to make it into yarn, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. And my plan is to make Layla a skirt with the yarn. Do you want, yes! Yeah, do you want mommy to make you a dancing skirt? Mm. Yeah, she's obsessed with dancing and always wants to wear a dress or have a dancing skirt on. <laughs> oh, you got it. She's got a skirt on right now on top of her dress that my mum made her to play with. Um, and yeah, she's really obsessed with that right now, so I'm thinking that's what I'll do. And it'll just be like a little play dress, play skirt for her. Yeah, yeah, the shirt! Yeah. I'm in the shirt! So that's my plan. There's 150 grams of fibre roughly here. So applied with a commercial skein of sock yarn, um, that will give hopefully decent enough yardage to be able to knit up something for her and shall we get cracking yes you want to get on with it yeah okay so the first way to prep a bat that you can spin it from it actually requires no prep whatsoever and you just open up your bat da -da. yeah you want to open up yours we'll show on yours as well and all you do is you can just Pull from one end and you can just start spinning across your bat if that's what you want to do or um so yeah that's what i'm going to do with one of the bats is i'm just going to spin from one end and just spin straight from the bat without doing anything to it yeah no yeah i'm going to leave one like that and then another one i'm going to show and open it up 
kind of a cheating one, that first one, because it actually requires zero prep whatsoever. Um, what we're going to do with this one is we're just going to strip it down into strips, and this applies, like I said, all of this applies to bigger bats as well. Um, you just tear off little strips. And they could be as thin or as thick as you want. I mean, these are all a relatively like single color. There's no like color changes and stuff. So if there were color changes, you'd want to take that into consideration when doing this. And then you, you can also, if you wanted to, be fine. yeah, we'll do that one in a second, honey. You can slightly pre-draft it a little bit. We'll wind them into little little nuggets and have them prepped like that. I'm just going to roll it up. Okay, you do the next one. You want to do the next one? Okay, you're going to roll it. You're going to roll it around your hand. Mommy, You gonna roll it around your hand? Mommy did it. That's the red one. You wanna do the red one? Okay, so that's one option. Okay, you wanna move this one? Shall we do this one as a big row lag? No, that one. No, no, that one. That one? Yeah. Okay. So the other option would be to do it as a big roll lag, which you can see the fibers are going this way. So for a roll lag, you would roll it up in this direction, horizontally. Um, alternatively, you could also roll it up this way. More, no, more lag. And then it's so, so, yeah. You want to roll that up? You want to do row row? You want mommy to show you? This way. Okay, turn it around this way. No. Do you want mommy's help? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So. So I can say you can either roll it up in this direction or you could roll it up in this direction. And so for a traditional sort of roll lag direction, you would go this way. And you can also, what you could do is you could split the bat into smaller sections and then do smaller roll lags, which is what I'm actually gonna do with this one. I'm gonna split it into three sections, I think. And then do smaller, like, faux lags, I guess. All right, three bits there. And sort of spread it out a little bit. It's kind of like pre-drafting a bit. Little bit. Yeah. Cut it off. No. No. It's all right. Oh no. Yeah. My dad that one. You can do this rolling around um, like knitting needles or something else if you'd like, but that's, that's how I would do it. The other option as well is you can break it off like this and re put it back onto your blending board and um, pull it off as roll lags. That, well. one, that one. With this one, we're going to do a variation. No, no. no. Yeah, you help me. Thank you. I'm going to do a variation on this, the second option. Instead of tearing it off into strips, we're going to do like a zigzag. Okay, can we do this one? Yeah. And you're going to fix it to your red one. And Mommy's going to do this one. Because it's the one. Yeah. And Mommy, no, because that 
Look at that one. You want to do this one? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that one then. We'll do the red one. Look at that one. Oh, mommy, that's the purple one. She can't make up her mind. Okay. Okay. So this one you can do is you're going to... Yeah. Almost as if you're tearing off strips, but before you get to the bottom, you stop. Yeah. Wait, stop. Let go. Stop. And then it's as if you're going to zigzag back up. So then you. No, 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 no. Not that way. Not that way. From this end, then you. Separate upwards. That one. That one. Yeah. And then again, you don't go all the way to the end. You then you move over and you start tearing back down. And you just like zigzag motion. Yeah, you can open that one up. No. No. What's up? What? Act. Oh, is it? You're wearing it like a hat? Look at you. Being silly? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. You can be silly. And so then you end up with this one long piece of bat. And then what you can do, you can pre-draft it a little bit. Oil. Yeah, you're putting it on your head. And then as you get to these turning points, you just carefully draft it without separating. I get up on. Yeah. And you have this lovely pile of start spinning from the end la, 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 la. you can obviously pre-draft this more than I've done it you can do the strips thinner or thicker <laughs> than I've done it, Is it more? Yeah, yeah. are you throwing it oh well yeah. done can you catch can you catch yeah. oh well done Leila good job or you can just play catch with your kid Boop. oh well done <laughs> can you catch can you sit down maybe be careful you're gonna fall off the chair in a second Alright, can you prep the catch? Oh, well done. Good girl. Okay, we're going to put that there. And now we're going to do this one. Make a make ball. Make a ball? Yes. Okay, we will do in a second. And if you end up with a bat that your child has played with make and calls them out. Make a make ball. Okay. Mommy. Okay, should we just do one big row row? zigzag roving type situation. All right. child helping you <laughs> you'll end up with bits so this is another option that you have is let your kid help out and you can do little um, little clumps this might be interesting we'll see how this one turns out because I mean that is another option especially if you have like a multicolored bat or a bat with a lot of variegation in it you can always um, break it up into small sections and then put them all into a bigger bag and just randomly pick out colors and just have a very sort of crazy yarn at the end of it okay thank you Leila okay this is a ball this one's a little ball get back big ball 
Yeah, well you tore it all up into small pieces. I don't know how we're gonna make a big ball out of all of this. Lots of little pieces. You can go get it. My whole point with this is um, you quite literally prep your back however you'd like, however it makes it easier for you to spin it. Um, there's no real right or wrong way to do it. Are you going to go get the bit you dropped? Oh, there you are. Did you get it? Yeah. Where is it? There. Now where's the where's the fibre? There. Can you go get it? Ooh. Oh, did it open up? Thank you, honey. That's it's all right, mommy will fix it. We have some bits. Mama, we have some mommy, little pulled bits of roving off the bat. Nilla. Pulled strips, sorry, not roving. Pulled strips off the bat. They like little white. Yeah, little balls. Yeah, so care. Yeah. So ball, so ball. You want to throw the ball? Yeah. Go on then. Ah! Oh, you dropped it again. Go get it. Go get it. The, the, the big, big ball. Make big ball. Look. Look. Okay, so. One, two, one, two, one, two. So the one, two. What comes after two? Three, and then what comes after three? Four. Four, well done. And what's after four? Five. Five, well done. Good girl. So to recap, there are four main options uh, or methods of preparing a bag. One is to not do anything with it. The second is to turn it into little faux lags or one big faux lag by just rolling up the whole bat and spinning from the ends. The second, uh, or the third, sorry, it's obviously it's not in the order that I did them in, a um, <laughs> bit too distracted with this child, is to pull them, pull them off into little strips and if you want to pre-draft, if not, just roll them up into little nests and spin from those. The fourth option, can you please stop doing that, honey? This is going to be fun, isn't it? The fourth option is to do to split the bat using a zigzag motion, not completely separating the strips, and then pre-drafting it a little bit and turning it into a long strip of fibre to spin from. The fourth option is to let your toddler at it and get lots of little bitty bits to spin from, like that. So that's the fifth option, sorry. I don't know if I said fourth or fifth at that point. Anyway, yes, and the fifth option is to let your child do that to your fibre and just see what you get at the end of it. It'll still be usable. Oh, ball. Yeah, what did you do? You just pulled it all apart. Look at that. You did that. You made a mess. Can mommy have that one? Thank you. Let's open this up. All right.
so um, I wanted to check in quickly. I've spun the singles from the bats and uh, yeah, just really quickly wanted to uh, recap over the prep methods that I went through just because Layla was very distracting earlier and sorry about the changing light. It's the afternoon now so we get a lot of light coming in through this window. And, uh, and yeah, so the first, um, I showed you each bat as I was spinning them at least a little bit. So the first one was the yellow one and we prepped that one by um, splitting it into strips and then spinning it that way. And then we did the green one, which we didn't prep at all. I just opened it up and I started from one corner and spun through the whole bat that way. And then we had the blue one, which I prepped as faux legs or row legs. I split it into three sections and then just rolled it up into and then treated it like a row leg and spun it that way. I spun most of these short forward draw with intermittent bits of supported long draw just to switch things up a little bit when I was spinning. And then the fourth version was um, doing, which was the purple, the last one I did on this bobbin. I, um, we did that in like the zigzag way. So it was like the, like the yellow one where we did it in strips, but instead of completely tearing the strips off, just going down to the end without separating it and then tearing back up and creating this little zigzag motion. And then um, pre-drafting it a little bit and drafting through those turns. And then the last one, um, last method of preparing the fiber was letting Layla have at it and let her come up with her method of preparing the fiber which was mainly just sat there she just went like this tore it to pieces so we spun that some of it didn't get torn up in which case I just like did the zigzag method again with it with, with what was not torn up but um, but yeah and then we spun that one onto a separate bobbin just because this one was very full by the time I got through four of the colors and it's really starting to pop off the end there um, and uh, and yeah so now all I'm going to do is apply it with some commercial uh, sock yarn it's not commercial sock yarn it's, it's actually indie dyed yarn uh, but it's commercially spun sock yarn and it was left over from a design project so um, I want to use that for this project and uh, like I said I think I'm going to turn this yarn into a rainbow sort of dancing skirt type of play skirt for Layla. She's really obsessed with skirts and dancing right now. So every time I wear a dress or she wears a dress, she's like dancing skirt, like dancing dress. It is the next day um, after I filmed plying, spinning and plying this. Um, I finished plying it last night in the end and it took freaking forever. I will be honest, I had not intended on getting as much yardage as I did, which is funny because normally I wanted more yardage than I got um, when I spin. But um, I had actually originally planned on spinning the singles for this a little bit thicker than I ended up spinning them. And mainly because I was a bit distracted while spinning, I wasn't paying 100% attention. I was watching TV or doing something else, so or like listening to something else. So I sort of started drafting a lot thinner without realizing. But my plan had been to spin a like sport weight-ish single, so a much thicker single than normal, um, to get like a slightly thicker finished yarn. But um, <laughs> that is not what happened. I have ended up with a lot more yardage. I ended up having to use a second skein of of like commercially spun yarn to ply with. So um, there's like two skeins worth of yarn here. So um, it's not, I, I measured, I counted the wraps and measured based on where we're at now. And at this particular point before washing and setting the twists and everything, we have about 738 yards or 675 meters which is significantly less than two skeins of sock yarn, but um, that's because of the plying takes out some of the yardage from like, cause it's twisted, it's not a straight line. Anyway, 
um, plenty of yardage and I actually I think I've now got too much yardage to do the project I had in mind which was like a skirt for Layla so I'm not sure if I'm gonna change that and make like a wrap skirt so I'll just make a long wide rectangle and put straps on it and then she can just wrap it around her and then tie it into a bow or something and then actually it will last her a lot longer than just um, whatever age and size she is now because it's a wrap and she can just wrap it less as she gets bigger um, anyway, so that's my idea. This is what it currently looks like on the nitty noddy. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'll pop it off. And it's been sitting on the nitty noddy overnight because I wanted to just show it to you. Oh, there you go. And obviously, the yardage I got was based on the size of the nitty noddy, so um, it's definitely going to be a little bit less than that once it's been washed and set. This is where we are at. A little bit of extra twist in it, which is fine because that will usually come out or spread out, even out a little bit once it's been washed. And uh, yeah, there you can get a good idea of the colors. So we went from yellow to green to blue to purple to red. I'm happy with how this has turned out. And like I said, it's a decent chunk of yarn. I need to weigh it to see how much is in there, but I'm guessing it's about 300, to 300 about 350 grams because I used two skeins of sock yarn and I'm pretty sure I had about 150 grams of fiber when I started. So um, a lot of weight went into this one. I don't know, maybe a skirt isn't the right way. Maybe I should use it to make, her, make Layla a jumper or something, I don't know. I may have to change my um, plans on this one but um but yeah so this is the big old yarn baby it's a little bit more scraggly on the side but um but yeah that's how it's turned out yeah quite chuffed with that decent there um yeah all right i'll be back hopefully to show you what this looks like once it's been set and um, yeah, so I'll see you soon.